first part of this tutorial will be the simple docking port you see on the left, which connects into the more complicated one, which I'll do in the second part of the video. The complicated one is good for space stations, and the simple one is good for like rockets or space planes. To start out, place a row of three blocks with a wedge on the side of each side. Now build up three blocks on top of each of the wedges on the sides, and then cap it off with two wedges with the flat ends facing in, and build a row of three blocks to close it off. So now you have a 5x5 five five hallway. Now place a ring of wedges where you want the outside of the docking port to be facing. Now place more wedges in the same positions, just out one, and only on the edges. Place the inverted wedge so that way they smoothly line up with the half blocks and point out towards the corners. Now place wedges in the corner to make it smooth. And now finally configure the half blocks to be a thickness of 0 0.1. Now copy that to all of them. And the final step is to paint them completely red. This way the auto docking will automatically know when the docking port is in place. And that's it. Optionally, you can place it in a wall, and in the end of the video, I'll show you how to make it retract inside the wall. Now I'll build six blocks out, and begin working on the more complicated side. Build a similar structure as before, a row of three blocks with wedges on the side. Build up three blocks on each side, wedges on the top, facing in and then another row of three blocks to connect them. Now we move all the middle, middle blocks of the rows and place dynamic offsetters with the green line facing out. This is very important. Now configure them, disable head, head side welds, and set their Y offset to negative 0.5. Copy that to all of them. Now place a piston on the ends of these dynamic off dynamic offsetters. Now configure them to have a target length of 2.5, a speed of around 2, max out the strength, leave the current length at 1, and we'll set extend later when we do the logic for this. Copy that to all of them. Now place a half block with the green line facing in on the piston and create a T shape. This is what's you, this is what will be used to latch on to the other side of the docking port. Now delete the two middle blocks to add color sensors. These will be used to detect when it should automatically clamp. Set that color to the same color you set to the docking port, which should be 255 red, zero green, and zero blue and set the range to 6. Now we need to place wedges in a very specific spot. This makes it seamless on the when it clamps down and get better grip. So you should have the corner of it facing in. After this is done, we will configure them so they're flush with the half blocks. Now it might take some fiddling to figure out which Y or Z axis you need to set. One of them should be 0.5 and the other should be 1. And just get it so it lines up. See this one's different, so it has to be flipped. You can figure all of the half blocks on the layer the sensors are on to 0.9. This way they smoothly line up with the docking port on the other side. Now add wedges to each one of the clamps on one side. So it makes like this spiral pattern. All right, now we'll start working on the door. Place a row of half blocks with the green line facing up, and then do the same thing on the top with the green line facing down. Now place pistons facing in on the dynamic offsetters. Set their target length to 2.01. Their speed to 3. You can make it a bit faster if you want the door speed faster. Up their strength to the maximum 
and set the current length to 2. Now build a row of half blocks in the middle so they look like that. And then place another couple half blocks so they line up with the piston head. Configure the outer half blocks to be 0.25 so they're perfectly in line with the piston head. And then configure the inside ones to 0.49 so there's just a tiny gap. Now configure the ones on the floor to 0.99. And same with the ones on the top. Now place wedges to seal up the open gap. We'll configure them down so they line up. So whatever axis is facing towards the outside, configure that to 0 0.75. So it should just line up perfectly with the head of the piston. And for the other axis, set it to something smaller like 0.25. Do the same for the other side. You might have to swap the values around. And now do the same for the other other sh other other side. Okay, now we can fill in some of the extra gaps. So you can place blocks on the left and right sides where the pistons are, and then fill the corners in with wedges. Now place another ring of blocks around the hallway and fill the corners in with wedges. So we need an AND gate. And this will be the AND gate that detects the sensors. So if both sensors are on, this AND gate will output true. Then we need an AND gate to control if the sensors are on and you push the auto docking enable button. So we're going to add a push button and this push button controls auto docking. So that to toggle and allow other players. While we're at it, I'm going to add another push button and just set it to allow other players. You don't have to do that. Ignore that for now. Right, configure this AND gate to the button. Now add another AND gate. First, it gets configured to this AND gate, and its secondary input isn't made yet. So, we need to add a NOT gate, and set it up to listen to the sensors AND gate. Then, from that NOT gate, we need to have the NOT gate input into a delay gate. So, with the delay gate, set activate to the NOT gate. Then from this AND gate, the middle one that we didn't configure, set input 2 to the delay gate. Now we need an OR gate. This OR gate, input 1, is the middle AND gate, and its second input is this push button. This push button is used to toggle the docking clamps. Finally, we need a toggle gate setting its input to the OR gate. Okay, that's the logic, that's the complex logic done. Uh, we, can, can, we can add some indicator lights. The left one I'm going to set to red. It'll be red when there's no nothing docked. You can set that to the NOT gate. The other one I'm going to set to yellow, and it says if the docking clamps are open or closed. So if it's yellow, the clamps are open and you can set that one to the toggle gate. Now for the doors. You can configure the door pistons and set them to extend on the NOT gate. I'm going to copy that and paste it into the other one. Okay. Now for the docking clamp pistons, set them to activate on the toggle gate. And I will copy and paste this to all the other ones. Okay, so we've got everything wired up, so I'm going to go to mechanical, grab an anchor, and anchor that one. Put a piston there, I'll hook it up to a button. Six, 
to that to four. So turn the push button, which I'll set to toggle. Okay. So I hit play. I hope that if I hit the right button, good, it opens up the clamp. If I hit it again, it closes the clamp. So I'm going to open it. And I'm going to press this button to push it in. And nothing should happen. Good. I'll click this button to clamp. Perfect. Now I'm going to unclamp really quick and unextend this. I'm going to enable the auto dock. So now, when it goes in, it should dock. Good. Alright, if you want to add a door to this side of the docking clamp, you can just copy it from this one over here and just rebuild it on this one. Okay, so now I'm going to show how to make the inline docking clamp. So that way it can squish in. It's good for compact builds or ones where you don't want the ugly docking port sticking out. I built this compact port specifically for Doob's spaceship so we wouldn't have the ugly port sticking out. And here is how it looks. You could make it extend out further by adding more blocks to the back and increasing the length of the piston. I'm going to start with the basic design of the port and then build the retracting bit onto it. But you could also build the frame of the retracting bit into the wall of your ship. This bit right here is what is going to be flush with your wall. So we're going to delete all the blocks out of here. So it's just left with the corner wedges. Then we're going to flip them over. Just place a wedge on top of it and delete the other wedge. So it should line up so you should, there should be an angled gap like this. Okay, now we're going to grab a half block and place them like this. Now you need to get wedges, place them like this, so the corners are to the wall making the outside flat, and they'll be sticking in. Now configure them so they're not sticking in and they're flush with the half blocks. So, as you can see, this will just slide inside. Next, we need to build a ring of half blocks inside the larger ring. This is just extending the docking port back. I can figure them all to 0 0.1. Now add another layer of half blocks. Now add an inverted half wedge around the outside to make it smooth. Now configure them all to 0 0.9. The, you will see out of here, don't put a wedge in here to try and close it up because it will cause it to weld with this, which is very annoying, but there's not much that can be done about it. Now we'll add the piston to extend and retract it, so delete this block, and replace it with a the half block, pacing up, and copy and paste to point 0.1, so it should line up with these two. Now add a piston two blocks back, so like that, then add a dynamic offsetter into it like that. Okay. Configure the piston to 2.5, set current length to 2, uh, and set the dynamic offsetter to retract by 0.5, and disable head side welds. Uh, add a button, you can add the button inside, you can add it really anywhere you want. I like to add it inside here, over here. And set it to toggle, and it optionally allow other players. Configure the piston to extend based on that button. You 
you're nearly done, now just add a. You can you should connect the back side of the dynamic offsetter just generally to your ship. And same with this ring right here. Ah, uh, so I'm just gonna connect like this. Do be warned, these are half blocks along the side, so don't try and connect a full block. Because then, when this retracts over like the left, it'll get stuck on this. So if you do need, if you do need to add blocks here, make sure they're half blocks configured to 0 0.9. So they line up seamlessly. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to add a piston to extend it. This wouldn't be in your actual build, it's just for demonstration. Now work. So yep, it retracts in. If you push the button, it retracts out. 